Hey folks, and welcome back. And you guessed it, it's that time of the year again where the editors here at bikepacking.com share a dozen products that they really enjoyed in 2021. Now, some of these products aren't necessarily new to 2021. Some of them are actually a handful of years old, at least in my case. But the main takeaway here is these products are items they may have been durable, or excelled during a bike packing trip, excelled during a day ride, something like that. They're standout products that I used in 2021. Let's get into it. All right, so jumping right into it, I've got the Victoria Agaro trail tires, and this thing is awesome. I recently put these on my Salsa Horse Thief, and it's basically transformed the way this bike rides. Paired with these Industry 9 30 millimeter rims, this tire is perfect for this specific bike. The Agaro truly has it all for what I look for in a tire. It not only rolls really well, but it corners, it grips in dry, dusty conditions, and of course, wet, loamy conditions. It comes in my favorite sizes, 29 by 2.6, which in my opinion is the ultimate tire diameter and of course, tire width. However, it does come in 29 by 2.35 as well as 27.5 by 2.35 and 27.5 by 2.6. The Agaro comes with these siped side treads as well as in the middle. And this helps with not only confident cornering, but also helps keep that tire planted on challenging climbs. The other thing I noticed was even though it doesn't have a continuous center tread, it does roll extremely well with these alternating center staircase treads. And finally, the tread's firmness seems like a nice balance of soft versus hard. It grips well and loose over hard, but also digs in enough to inspire in wet soil. The Agaro has a really consistent ride quality from corner to corner, which I truly appreciated over the past two months that I've been using this tire. The Agaro does come in their lightweight trail casing, which still happens to be rather heavy. These tires do come in at 970 grams, but I do feel like it is an adequate trade-off for what it offers. You can find the Agaro at your local bike shop for $75. So by now, many of you have seen our reviews on the Fillmore valve, both Logan's written review and my video review. And if you haven't, it's linked below. In the video review, many of you commented saying either it was an awesome idea or it was too expensive. That being said, the Fillmore valve has truly made my life easier. And that's why it made this list. I can't tell you how many Presta valve cores I've had to replace in my lifetime, let alone just this year. It's a lot. Presta valve cores were just not made for modern day tubeless systems. And that's where the reserve Fillmore valve comes into play. And they truly make tubeless setup that much easier because, well, it has three times more airflow than a Presta valve. And with this neat little cap on here, it allows you to micro adjust how much air you take out at once. The Fillmore valve looks very similar to the Presta valve. And that was probably by design because, well, reserve wanted to make sure that all of the current pumps work on the Fillmore valve. And they do, even my digital air checker. Because the Fillmore valve has saved me so much time, energy and frustration, I ended up buying another set. And yes, I do think $50 is expensive for some valves, but I also do think it's worth it, especially over the long haul, saving time and energy. And this is kind of cool. It says, please compost this packaging. That's neat. So if you're interested in the Fillmore valve, head to your local bike shop. So I understand, like many of you, you are serious coffee drinkers. And I understand that you would like to carry your AeroPress and or a pour over on your bike packing trips. Oftentimes, I like to do the same thing, but oftentimes I also run out of space. And the first thing to go is the AeroPress because it does take up a lot of space. But there is a delicious alternative and it is steeped coffee. Steeped coffee is essentially just ground coffee inside a tea bag. And all you have to do is pour water into your cup, dunk the tea bag, and let it steep. It's pretty great. And sure, you could probably do this at home, grinding your own coffee and throwing it in tea bags. I do appreciate the convenience of buying it from one of my favorite roasters in Ruby Coffee Roasters. Ruby offers two roasts, the August Roast and the Creamery Roast. Eight tea bags come in a package and you can buy a package on their website for $16. Next up is the Richie Venture Max Extra Large Bar. And I actually got this bar from Richie last November and I probably could have put it on last year's 2020 gear list, but I just didn't have enough time on it. Over the past year, I've realized that this bar has truly been a wonderful addition to my salsa cutthroat. If you've seen any of my videos, you probably realize by now I'd much prefer flat bars over drop bars. But if I can't get a flat bar, I may as well have a super wide drop bar. 
And that's what you get with the Ritchie Venture Max XL. This idea not only allows extra space on the bar for bike packing bags, accessories, gadgets, what have you, but it also gives the bike a much more comfortable and stable feel on rough and chunky single track that I find myself on often. The bar comes in a maximum length of 647 millimeters in width from drop to drop. It has 24 degrees of flare in the drops and the drops themselves come with a really cool little dimple design which give you multiple hand positions, but I also feel like it gives you a nice little ergonomic feel, especially when you are going over that rough, chunky terrain. The bar comes with 4.6 degrees of back sweep, which gives you increased comfort because it puts you in a more upright position. The triple butted 7050 aluminum only comes in at 325 grams, and I found it had a little bit more flex than most aluminum bars that I've used making it much more comfortable than some other alloy bars out there. The Ritchie VentureMax XL does come in at $109.95. And if you're not looking for something that wide, definitely check out the Ritchie Venture Max. It's the same bar, but it does come in a variety of sizes from 38 centimeters to 46 centimeters. One of the most important things about cycling, especially bike packing, maybe long distances, is the contact points. Your butt, your hands, and of course, your feet. And once you test a product that excels in extremely demanding terrain, well, you know you have a winner. And that's what I found in the Perlazumi XL Summit shoe. So I've been using or testing Perlazumi shoes for a really long time. I actually used a very similar shoe to this back five years ago called the Perlazumi XL Launch 2. And that shoe was great, but this shoe builds off of that, and this shoe is much better. The x -Help is a clipless compatible cycling shoe that has a great walkability to it. What this means is it translates to not only a good bike packing shoe, but also a great shoe for hiking with your bike. The shoe comes with a robust and solid tread, a really comfortable midsole which flexes for those hike bikes and while it's not extremely stiff it still transfers enough power to be rather efficient using this shoe all summer including a full pull on the colorado trail i found that the shoe is really comfortable right out of the box it dries rather quickly it's super easy to micro adjust with this boa it all comes in a lightweight package yet it still comes with plenty of padding for all day comfort this shoe really surprised me especially considering what I threw at it. So if you're interested in checking out this shoe, head to pearlazumi.com or any Pearlazumi dealer. You can find this shoe in this gray or spruce and it will cost you 150 USD. I've always appreciated the minimalist nature of a handlebar bag, especially those harness-like systems. It requires less effort to pack and unpack over the course of a bikepacking trip. I've used a handful of these types of systems over the past few years, but the one I've been using the most is the outer shell handlebar harness. The system is pretty simple. It's made up of a HDPE plastic sheet, some volet straps, some foam spacers, a little bit of webbing, and some one wrap. It's a very simple design, it's lightweight, and it fits nearly every handlebar. But the thing I really enjoy about this system is it's super stable on rough terrain. With minimal effort, the system stays in place and it's easy to unstrap the volet strap to get your dry bag out. The harness system also has no absorbing bit, so it won't get bogged down from, say, water, which is pretty neat. So while this system does not come with a dry bag, Outer Shell does sell dry bags on their website. And if you're looking for a little bit more storage, the handlebar harness is compatible with Outer Shell's draw cord handlebar bag. The handlebar harness runs for 60 United States dollars. And if you're interested in purchasing this, head to outershell.com. So if you like what you see in our videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna help support us more, you can sign up for the Bike Packing Collective. The Bike Packing Collective includes a handful of awesome benefits, and it also includes the Bike Packing Journal, which is shipped to your door twice a year. For more information, I've provided a link below. As always, thank you all so much for the support. Well, I know not everyone, but many of us use a GPS device to follow a track for their bikepacking trips. But I do understand the importance to have a backup. And that's where paper maps came in handy. But with the evolution of smartphones, we can now have all of those paper maps in one location. And we can also have an app where we can explore endless bikepacking possibilities. And that's exactly what you can do with Gaia GPS. And if you don't use a GPS, the app allows you to record your ride, say if you're using your phone as your GPS device. It also allows you to create routes, upload tracks, download maps offline, and much more. One of the really awesome things about Gaia GPS is that they have a already really great built-in map, the Gaia Topo map but they also have a variety of other maps that you can choose from. And if you don't know which one you like better, well, you can layer the maps on top of each other. 
For instance, the Gaia GPS map is a great base map, but I also really like to make sure that the Nat Geo's Trail Illustrated map is turned on because that is hands down one of the coolest, most detailed maps out there. Gaia did a fantastic job of sourcing different types of maps for different types of activities, and they even have weather maps, which is really neat. And while the Gaia GPS app on your smartphone is fantastic and you can make routes and do everything you need to on your smartphone, I do find myself using the Gaia desktop web app from time to time just to get a bigger picture of those potential adventures. Oh, and if you still like to print maps, Gaia has a feature where you can do that. The price did go up to $40 per year for the subscription, but I still do think that is well worth your money. I really love socks. Not only do socks let you express yourself, but in the case of Swiftwick socks, they help give you support while also wicking moisture. So I've been using Swift Wick socks for I think 10 years now, mainly because, well, my feet, they're a little weird. They're a little messed up, but the Swift Wick sock is super nice for those longer day rides or, you know, when you're bike packing day in and day out. The sock is designed in a way so it can be more supportive. It's snug, it hugs your foot, and it does compress so that it doesn't swell. So I just threw out a pair of five-year-old Aspire 7 socks because they had some holes in them. So I just got some new ones. And these are actually the Pursuit sock. This is their Merino wool blend sock. It doesn't have as much compression as the Aspire, but it does have a little bit more cushion, which is kind of nice. And it also keeps you a little bit warmer. Obviously it's wool, but the best thing about wool is, well, it doesn't smell. So if I was to suggest any of their socks, I would probably suggest this seven inch Pursuit sock. If you're looking for something a little bit more flashy, the Vision sock is pretty cool, although it doesn't have as much compression. The cool thing about Swiftwick socks is most of your local bike shops can get these for you. Believe it or not, headlamps have actually come a long way in a pretty short amount of time. I used to use a headlamp that had hardly any output, but three years ago, I bought the Storm 400 from Black Diamond here. And well, I've used it on every single one of my bike packing trips over that time, as well as my bike packing races. There's a lot of really neat features about this headlamp, starting with, well, it has 400 lumens and 400 lumens for five hours with fresh batteries in it, which is quite a bit. And I really like that setting and that was the reason I got this light. And while I rarely use it in that 400 lumen setting, it has proven to be beneficial during a few long days in the saddle as a backup light. The light comes with a distance setting, which is the best for cycling, a close proximity setting, and also three color settings, blue, green, and red, which I use all the time. The headlamp takes four AAA batteries, which means that you don't have to worry about charging your headlamp when it's out of juice. And maybe the most important thing is the light, it comes with a lock. So when you stuff it into a stuff sack or stuff it into your frame bag, it's not gonna accidentally turn on. This light has seen a ton of use and abuse. I've cracked this faceplate here actually right when I got it and it's held up ever since. And a really neat feature of this headlamp is, well, you can take off the headlamp strap, use some one wrap to wrap it around the mount here so that you can easily attach it to your helmet. The Black Diamond Storm 400 retails for $49.95. However, you don't have to look very hard to find it for cheaper. We all need to poop, and doing so in the great outdoors, in the backcountry, requires a little bit more attention. Prior to doing so, it's important to have not only the knowledge, but the tools to do so. We published a video earlier this year on leave no trace principles and how it relates to bikepacking. So if you're an aspiring bikepacker, someone that hasn't gone before or just doesn't have the knowledge of how to, well, poop in the woods, we highly recommend you watch that video. Well, I try to set up my bathroom usage strategically where I sit on a pit toilet and enjoy my morning business. Oftentimes it just doesn't work out and I'm in the backcountry in a beautiful setting where there isn't a pit toilet. And that's where the deuce two comes in handy. It's a lightweight trowel. It's 0.6 ounces and well, it's rather small as you can see. The Deuce 2 is an effective solution that allows you to dig a cat hole six to eight inches in the ground. It really likes to be used 200 feet from any water source and it especially likes to be used in a private location, not next to any campsite or trail. The Tent Labs Deuce 2 comes in at $19.95 and if you're looking for an even more minimalist option, you can check out the Deuce 1. Or if you're looking for a full length trowel, you can check out the Deuce 3. Last year, I convinced myself not to put this on my list, but this year I couldn't do so because, well, this tool I use more than any other tool combined. Yes, you heard that right. The T-Ratchet from Silka deserves all the press it can get. 
The T-Ratchet allows me to tighten and loosen bolts on my bike fast because, well, it's a ratchet. And the three-part tool allows you to use the tool in all sorts of ways to get to hard to reach areas, to get a bit more leverage, or just to simply tighten or loosen a bolt faster. The tool comes with all the common hex keys and Torx keys and with a rather nice carrying case. And at $65, it's definitely not the cheapest ratchet style tool of this nature, but I definitely think it's the most versatile and most ergonomic one out there. I've been using the T-Ratchet over the past three years and well, it's definitely paid for itself. So my last pick here is a fabric. And this is the Challenge Outdoors EXP 200. And Rogue Panda just recently started using this fabric for not only their top two bags, but also their custom frame bags. Challenge Outdoors EXP 200 is made out of a 100% recycled polyester. And the cool thing is it acts very similar to what most bike packing bags are made out of right now, VX21. It's durable, it's lightweight, it repels water, and it looks the part. And I can attest to the durability of this fabric. After using them all summer long, they've definitely held up. Rogue Panda is currently using black and gray in Challenge Outdoors EXP 200 and have plans on using other colors once they run out of VX21 stock. So that about does it. If you have any comments or questions regarding any of these products, leave a comment in the comment section below. As always, thank you all so much for watching and thank you all for the support. And until next time, pedal further.